डियर फ्रेंड्स लेट्स रीड द ब्यूरियर रिटन बाय आर एम राजगोपाल द पेट इज रेडी फोर बाय फोर बाय फोर फीट अ नीटली कंप्लीटेड जॉब द बॉटम एंड द साइड्स लेवल एंड फर्म द नाइट इज डार्क ओनली डिम स्टार लाइट विद बेरली एनी विजिबिलिटी डग बिटवीन अ हेज एंड द कमेंसमेंट ऑफ अ वेजिटेबल पैच पोर्शंस ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टी नॉर्मली नॉट ट्रेवर्स्ड There is no imminent danger of anyone falling in. It had been completed in the evening. It had taken two of the malis a whole hour to get it ready. The sahib had inspected it personally and nodded, satisfied. The party is about to start. It is half past nine, the normal commencement time for an event for which the invitation said eight. No dress code specified. Yet the night is pleasant, and as the guests file in. It is mostly dark lawn suits and resplendent silk sarees to set off thick chokers of pearls and glittering diamonds. The odd blazer and grey flannels are present too, accompanied by a well-tailored pant suit, light polo neck sweater and Gucci shoes. The host is a man of large build, a full face and strong jawline, dressed in a well-cut suit and assiduously shined shoes. a powerful person apparently for many of the invitees or ever so slightly obsequious as if honored to have been invited when he greets this variety his posture turns straight reflecting an imperious attitude with others there is much hugging and vigorous shaking of hands the language of greeting varies from hindustani to english to chaste punjabi depend on who the person is The large spread of lawn fills up soon enough and the host leave the entrance to mingle greet and converse with the stragglers who turn up even later having to search them out to say their hellos Singapore is no place to shop anymore yaar everything has become so expensive and it is such a boring place i mean for how long can anyone survive on just good food and drink as entertainment I can't stand it for more than 3 days at a stretch. I run for my life from there after. Dubai is excellent, a real place to go, especially for the shopping festival, yaar. You can get Bali shoes for 200. Two I bought last time. The tables are covered with white and silky satiny cloth. The overhang in front of a deep maroon like the red, a giant arrangement of red and white roses is placed at the center. while smaller vases are placed throughout the spaced intervals oh hello ji long time since i've met you where have you been hiding all these days i was in new york ji kiran recently delivered a healthy baby boy and a citizen also from day one only he can contest even for the president's post you know see kebabs grilled to mouth watering succulents shamims the meat so finely ground that they melt on the tongue paneer pakoras deep fried the oil drip mobbed gently away with paper napkins salted cashew nuts lightly roasted and still warm from the fire kalmi kebabs kasturi kebabs thinly sliced lamb part of a whole leg roasted over a spit fire in the true tradition of dera ismail khan from whence the host who was a toddler all of 6 years of age had followed his father to the refugee settlement near king's way camp but did nothing like in vegas prakash you know how made he is lost 3000 dollars in one night i could not do anything you don't mind a 1000 rupees charge at diwali time he asked me if you don't then this is okay also it is an extremely dangerous place i am telling you this is las vegas i know it my mohinder he is not any different we go to mauritius for a nice holiday the beaches are so fine the sand is like silk but he must play every evening he only knows how much he lost i don't even keep a count of the peers look resplendent in white uniforms diagonal red sashes and turbans of red and white as well as white gloves as they delicately cart around trays with glasses and eats The whiskey is blue label, the Gin Gordons, the Bloody Marys are delicious and so are the white ladies. The evening progresses, empty stomachs, 
a full eight hours since lunch, heady stuff. The laughter gets increasingly raucous. The jokes that much bolder. What did the Punjabi gentleman say to the prostitute? The raconteur asks. Expectant silence. Vor ji, ki galle? The garden is landscaped, surrounded on all four sides by a thick, neatly trimmed hedge, with twinkling lights shining along the whole length. The pathways that zigzag through the center are made of smooth, polished sandstone, such that each slab seems to have been chosen individually. The lighting is soft and subdued. The glow is sufficient to recognize and converse. The spacing of the lights just right. The warm yellow luminescence from the lamps setting off the rich, deep green of the perfectly groomed lawn. Up a gentle grassy slope is the house itself. softly lit so as to set out its contours a floor of smooth flawless italian marble sofas of gentle design covered in off white silk drapes of like material now drawn to either side a horsey husain displayed on the wall that directly faces the wide open french windows low coffee tables with gleaming crystal vases arrangements of bright flowers that set off the gleaming whiteness of the ambience Oh gee, it has been a good year. The host addresses the four or five gentlemen standing around him. It is a question of being able to predict correctly. Earth colors, I said, browns and greens. I was right. I sold and sold so much that I could not cope with the demand. Germany, G, and France. It cannot happen every year like this. But sometimes luck is with you. The audience nods approvingly. Dinner is heated up. Round dishes of shiny German silver, not the flat, rectangular stainless steel variety that you often see at weddings, and the covers have a lifting knob made of polished brass. On the side, the grill is still in operation. The kebabs have been given way to the tender legs of chicken, tandoori marinated to just the right succulence. The rest of the spread makes a daunting culinary array. Genuine staff, not the Pandara Park variety. Butter chicken, palak gosht, fish in the Amritsar style, laced with coriander, mutter mushroom, mutter paneer, jeera aloo, and dry bhindi. Yellow and deep brown dals, their consistency just right, and a gargantuan artistic arrangement of salad. None of the dishes floats in oil. No such vulgarity. Mr. Shawney is too much of a sophisticate for such stuff. Some of the guests who drank in moderation tuck in the pangs of hunger, rumbling in their stomachs at this late hour. Others who have imbibed incessantly, finding the standing and eating fork in one hand, plate, and starched napkin in the other, to be beyond their capabilities of motor coordination in their current state, and in any case. The liquor has still their gastric juices to an extent where they are not particularly hungry, anyways. The steadier amongst the guests are women folk having consumed alcohol in small quantities or not at all. The bread is hot off the fire, an interesting melange, tandoori naan, chased misi. There are piranhas too for those who prefer that, but no puris. Mrs. Swane considers them too oily and too messy. It is still winter in Delhi, a late November evening, but at this hour the night air is turning a shade nippy, a little uncomfortable despite the strategically placed coal-fired cigarettes. With the clock considerably past the twitching hour, the party ends rather abruptly after dinner. No post-parental, much hugging and smacking of lips in the air. Close to S T Lauder, at cheeks as the people start to exit. A half hour or so later, the last of them have departed, and Mrs. Sohone ragged at the edges of the end of an exhausting day, making sure that everything was just so. Has retired in the direction of the bedroom. The caterers are packing up too, shouting to each other over the clang of utensils. Mr. Sohone leads the procession, two malis and two house servants. Each pair is carrying between them the items for interment. Large quantities, two aluminium containers, full, and the loads are heavy, making them struggle and stumble at times over the uneven ground. Mr. Sohne is never one to provide too little at his parties. 
better some waste than to suddenly find the table bereft of say the delectable acker ghost consumed in large unplanned for quantities this had happened in front of him a couple of weeks earlier at a friend's place sorry but we have run out of the stuff murmured embarrassed apologies no none of that for mr sohane as the entourage reaches the designated spot thankfully a half moon is shining enough light to go by since this portion of the garden is largely unlit careful says mr sohane careful as the pouring starts each container is emptied in turn into the dark depths of the pit readied in the afternoon and an exotic medley of mouth watering smells hits the nostrils of the pourers the displaced mud stacked neatly on either side of the pit is poured back in to cover the hole any left over the earth is spread neatly on the empty ground around as mr sohane walks back he nods to himself satisfied no 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 point distributing the stuff amongst the retinue as many do it will only end up spoiling them creating uncalled for cravings upon taste buds used to a dal and a sabzi and doesn't mrs sohane provide them with as many rotis at each meal as they would like to eat she isn't one to act measly to ration out the stuff she believes they work much better with their bellies full as mr sohane enters the house he rubs his shoes vigorously on the mat outside so as to remove any remnants of the mud and dust collected on the journey to the burial ground and back mrs sohane is a dragon for cleanliness and the carpet just inside the french windows through which he enters is indeed pristine clean so friends this is the end of the story please stay tuned for the next story